Hey! Uh, What's up? We're live. All right, we're live. Hey, everyone. Hey, guys. What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? We got Jordu with us tonight. Welcome, Jordu. Thank you so much. Turn this off. <laughs> I'm sitting here in Casey's mask lined walls and his uh, awesome little studio here in his two car garage. <laughs> and uh, it's a great looking space. It's inspiring and can't wait to get started. I'm going to do a little something, something on here. And Casey's going to continue working on his four eyed ghoul. Yeah. Some sort of bizarre monster four-eyed zombie mutant thing cromwell they know him i named him cromwell so welcome guys um so tonight we have jordy with us as of course and, <sighs> and we'll talk about all kinds of stuff whatever comes to mind monsters you name it probably masks i'm sure we will discuss that and many other things i hate to say it, i think i do want some tinfoil okay casey offered me some tinfoil earlier and i said no <laughs> realized now it was a mistake I need it after all. So it doesn't... <laughs> so his lovely wife, Melissa, is off to get us a little tin foil. Yep. I'm going to pack it around this thing and just do a head, a small little head here. So as usual, you know, if you guys have any questions while we're going and, you know, you have comments or anything like that, feel free to, to up. speak up. Yeah, let us know what you guys want to talk about. We love monsters and monster masks and model kits and... Old movies and all kinds of crap. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. Here's a question I have for this you. This is not the kind of brand I like. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the right thickness. So, uh, Jordan, I was thinking before you got here, I was trying to think in my head uh, about questions to ask you, and I'm horrible at that kind of stuff. But something I've always wanted to ask you, and I How'd know you get you, so fat? No. I know you get asked this a lot. How did I get some? No. <laughs> Go on. No. When it comes to masks, right? Latex masks. I've never heard of those. Is, what is your favorite, favorite, favorite creature to design? Genre. Aliens, monsters, zombies. What is it? I think I love it all so much. It's very difficult to narrow down what my favorite thing is. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of aliens. You know, doing space creatures and stuff like that. I like mutants. I like genetic mutations and things that are just beyond description. And um, love crafting stuff. Yeah, hard to pick, right? It's, it's very like... difficult because there's so much great stuff out there to do, and there are so many different. Uh, genres to choose from yeah it's a little difficult for me to say i mean yeah i get asked that question and i get i come up blank because and because there's combinations of those things exactly i mean i think one of my favorite things i can definitely answer it this way one of my favorite things to do is to breathe new life into an old sometimes often corny design like if someone says I want you to do a remake of Robot Monster, but I want it to be really good, like realistic. Yeah. That's a lot of fun to me because it gives you a chance to take have a starting point and come up with a new take on it. I find that very exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Like uh, someone could say... Teenage werewolf or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. And, and you just come up with your own take on it. Yeah. Definitely. That's a lot of fun. Especially when it's something that is considered kind of corny or lame by today's standards. And the challenge is to make it cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's I have a client right now who's... <laughs> Having me do um, a commission of the uh, Invasion of the Saucerman Aliens. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to getting into that. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. 
That's but a, it's so it's so big yeah. that I've been waiting forever for um for uh Amazon to deliver these big styrofoam balls that I need to block out the form. Is it for the eyes or no, just for the head. Yeah, I mean I'm, I ordered these big half styrofoam spheres, you know, that are like this big across. Yeah. And I'm gonna use a series of those glued to my life cast. To kind of bulk it out. Okay, yeah. Take up the space, right. Yeah. That's a yeah, that's a huge piece because it's, it's you're doing it life size, I take it. Oh yeah. So it's massive. So He's the same guy who had me do a really cool project where I did um the Metaluna Mutant. Is this cryptic? He's on Instagram cryptic. I think so, yeah. His yeah. name is Brian. Brian, yeah. Have you been stuff with him? Yeah, he's bought a few pieces from me over the years. Yeah, I think he's down in Irvine, or last he was down in Irvine or something. Yeah, Brian. Um, Very nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a tattoo artist. Something. Yeah, he might be. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're just getting underway with that. Well, I'm waiting for this stuff to get here from Amazon, and then I'll get started. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Now, do you do? Uh, you do a lot of commissions for clients still these days? Um, yeah, I mean, I get a lot of people. The most common thing is people say, I want this. How much is that? And I tell them and they go away. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most common thing. Yeah. But there are some people who don't go away and go, oh, that's reasonable. I said, damn, I should have said more. But, um, you know, you, you can always separate the wheat from the chaff pretty quickly by giving them a price and if they balk it you know i usually try to say well what what are you looking to spend yeah and if they say well you know i was thinking like 50 60 bucks you know yeah like as if that's a lot and i'm like that's not no that's like something you get at halloween city or something you know Right, right. Yeah. Um, but if they say, well, you know, I've got 1500 I can spend more if you need it, but, you know, I prefer to... I think, okay, they're serious, you know. Yeah, they have some money. Decent money. Yeah, I run into that a lot. Um, I think all freelancers do. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's I, I get it, but, like, uh, uh, lately, too, especially with the times, with, with the cost of everything going up, the way it is these days, you know, dramatically too, yeah, like massively, and it's like, you know, you come at them and you say, well, this many days of my time, you know, is going to amount to this much money, and then they, they freak out. They're like, well, you know, yep. like, well, that's beyond my cost, but they they don't understand that, you know, the time and labor into something like like that from scratch is massive amounts of time and labor. Well, there was this funny thing going around on Instagram, probably TikTok too, that a lot of um, freelance artists really liked and they started putting it on their thing. It was this little song that went, it cost that much because it takes me fucking hours, hours. <laughs> it cost that much because I don't have superpowers. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah it's but I mean, it, what's surprising to me is that so many collectors... Not nearly all of them. I mean, I have plenty of really wonderful people that are collectors of mine. Um, and if they can't afford it, they just say, yeah, I'm sorry, that's a little too rich for my blood. I can't do it right now. Right. But there are some people that actually get aggressive and kind of rude when you tell them how much it is, as if how dare you have that kind of price. You know, and it's like, what? Yeah. I think sometimes that's, they're just, they're upset that they can't get what they want little bit of, of that's a bit childish because it's like well well they, they act like we owe them something yeah you that, know it's like yeah. what Get well out of here. i also have that where you're working on a project for a collector and then that happens and they and they act like you know you owe them the world and it's like well no you, you don't own me <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just making something for you um yeah but but um, I'm going through puberty. <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> well, I mean, most most of my clients, most of my regular clients, are very very decent people. Yeah, they're very nice. And guys like Gary Marshall, you know Gary. Oh yeah, Gary. Yep. Gary's Gary. just one of the nicest people I've ever known. Yeah, Gary's probably on here. What's up, Gary? If you're on here, buddy, watching. Yeah, you better be on here, yo. <laughs> yeah. Where you at? Oh. You can actually see some of the chat. It's small writing. But okay. It's... Cool, cool, cool. I'm just seeing if Gary's on here. By the way, let's say what's up to everyone. Sam, if you want to take over and, and sure. do that, we've kind of just like jumped right into things here. Okay. I actually don't have a microphone in front of me, but you do, and you have the oh, chat right Oh, I do. Yeah, what am I do? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, you're Sam, you do this. You don't have any way to do it. Okay, so let's say hi to everyone. Neil Leffler, what's up? Ryan McCruden, John Eubank, we got Jason Jack Jackanot, Jack Gennetti, I'm sorry. What's up, Bri? Oh my God. What's up, Brian? Alice Wright, Edward. Alice, Penefic. hey, Alice is a great gal. You know do you Alice? know her? No, do you know? I yeah, she's so. a she's a really good painter. She worked for me um for a while earlier this year. She's really talented. She might have did she oh, she might have posted recently on the Monster uh, Jam page, have, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really cool mask. Um, H and J, the Grave Diggers Workshop, Kevin Young, the Mental Factory, Shadow, Creative Mutation, Ken Clark, Mark E Effects, Creative. Oh, I said that already. Uh, Taboo Dread, Chris Dawson, Liam Dore, Ken Clark, Brandon Wheeler, the Mental. Oh, I said that one already. Right. Creative Mutation. I said that one too. God damn it! All right, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not vintage. I'm grumpy. Thomas K. Scott Whitworth. What's up, Scott? Good buddy of mine. You remember Scott, Scott Whitworth? Whitworth. <laughs> he did the busts. He did a bunch. Remember at Monster Palooza in the corner next to me? He was always there with all the busts. Yes. Yeah. He was always. That was Scott Whitworth. I think I want to need an overhead light. Oh, okay. Like we'll maybe that grab one lamp over there. Yeah. Behemoth. <laughs> Uh, create a mutation. Kirk Durfee, John Mahoney. What's John up, Mahoney, John? what's up, boy? What's up, dude? Um, Chris Dawson. I think I said Chris Dawson. I think I'm just repeating myself now. Well, Neil Kazama. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anyone here. Brandon Wheeler, Shelly Moth. Said that one, I think. All right. Well, hey, welcome everybody. Welcome. Thank oh, you, Day Dallas. I have to say, what's up to you? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Thanks for joining in. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining in, guys. Um, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. We're going to try to make your Monday night a lot funnier and better. <laughs> so that's what we're here to do. Just have fun, jam on monsters. Jordy and I talk monster crap all night. So hang with us. If you guys have any questions, hit us up. We'll hit up those questions later on and be sure to get back to you guys. And... Are you guys able to get that? All right. I think it's. <laughs> Probably close, maybe a little closer. So. so, how's everybody doing tonight? In you the could chat? put on this and slide that forward. Then. Yeah. And apologies. For the last two weeks, guys, I was not able to be on for different reasons. As you guys know, I did a went up to Yosemite for a bit. Um, Sam couldn't join us; he was stuck with work duties. So we apologize about the last two weeks. We're always trying to be consistent every Monday, but it's not always easy. So uh, apologies for that. But here How was Yosemite. Yosemite was beautiful. Melissa and I did this ridiculously crazy hike, though. Have you heard of Half Dome? You know Half Dome. Of course. Right. So we tried to hike all the way up to Half Dome. And we got one mile from it before we said, enough. We're done. So oh, it was man. 15 miles up and down. Or, well, sorry. 15 miles round trip. Jesus. So we were spent. But it was beautiful. Right, hon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they... <laughs> you were hidden by my monster head. Yeah. So... It was uh, really beautiful. Yeah. And it Spinning didn't around. <clears throat> spin the whole image of it so it reaches further. And, uh... Now we're talking. 
Oh, let me let me position. There we go. I might be a little blown out now. Mm -hmm. about there. There we go. All right, Jordy's got light now. We're just setting up, helping him set up a light so he can see what he's doing. So what do you have in mind, Jordy? Just I have from... no idea. I am just... <laughs> Whatever. Plowing forward on some some kind of thing. I don't know what you want to be at all. Now, you know, so I was thinking about this too earlier because I've heard, you know, a lot of the stories as you've grown up with the mask, the distortions mask, you know, the, the influence and all that. Um, so back when I was a kid, that was the mask um that i used to see that i could not afford the melting, man. the melting man be something which i'm sure you can't turn around and see but you know melting man from be something of course it was like yeah. a purple gray melting thing of course yeah. this one's painted differently um that's a new copy that they did for me but um so back in the day i'd visit i lived in temple city arcadia and we'd go to uh my parents would take me to the mall and and uh, i would see you know, we'd go to like basically next to the athlete's foot or whatever that was, the foot locker. <laughs> athlete's foot. foot. Athlete's nice. foot, foot locker. Um, I would always go get soccer cleats. My parents always had me in sports. And I was always running out of there without shoes on because right next door was a Hallmark and they were always setting up for Halloween. And they would notoriously every year hang the masks from the ceiling, from the front to the back yep. of the store. Do you remember that? I remember that. All of the higher, upper end, high end stores used to do that with their masks because yeah. they were too expensive. They didn't want kids getting their jelly fingers all over shit. Right, right. So they would hang you know. them up. And I think it was Spencer's would have like, a oh pie, yeah, right. They'd have big rows. Yep. Fang face and yep. Yeah, man. So those good old days. Bro. Those are the good old days, man. I mean, so where where you grew up. Because I know you went to a lot of magic shops to see masks, right? But did you have those stores as well that you would go to? Well, we definitely had Spencer Gifts. In fact, I think Spencer Gifts had some kind of deal with Franco or something. It seemed like they carried exclusively Be Something masks. Yeah. And I had, like, like the one that I saw back in... 1978 maybe there they had she wolf mm, yeah and i just lost my mind when i saw i was like i have to own that but i mean it was 36 dollars. i remember how much it costs even now yeah that number stuck in my brain because i was it might as well have been you know five hundred thousand dollars right i yeah. wanted it so bad and i thought i'll never have the money for that I raked leaves, I shoveled snow, I did everything I could, and I still was not making the money fast enough to get this thing. Yeah. And I just obsessed over it, and I wanted it so much. And I remember going to a haunted house, and somebody had one in the haunted house, and I was like, damn, this haunted <laughs> house must have millions of dollars <laughs> if they could afford that mask, you know? Yeah. Um. What's so funny is $36 ain't shit now. No. It's, it's, but I mean, it, it seemed like a king's ransom back then. Yeah. No, I, I remember because my parents, too, you know, they, I, I, I remember specifically begging for masks and they were just like, no, no. And then it was like, well, you got to pick on a $20 mask or something like that or $10 mask. Right. You know, the ones, the ones that you could actually touch and reach. In the store were the ones you could afford. Yeah, I think I think that if my parents, and probably the same with you, if my parents had known that it would lead to this being my job and, like, it was a very important thing, they wouldn't have hesitated. But back then, it's like $36 was a large amount of money. Yeah. It was probably, like, 
you know, $150 now. Right. Yeah. And you're buying your kids something that costs that much. And like, you don't know if it's some passing interest of theirs or if it's something they really love and are passionate about. Had they known that it would be, I think by the time I was in my teens, they knew because I was spending every dollar I earned around the house doing chores and stuff yeah. on that stuff. And uh, then they started, you know, loaning me money to buy masks and they raised my dumb little allowance and everything. And I started being able to actually buy a lot of these things. And I mean, I was at those costume shops every day. Yeah. But, but yes, to answer your question, we definitely had Spencer Gifts. My friend Ken's brilliant. He seems to remember that they had them at KB Toys. KB Toys? Have you heard of KB yeah, Toys? Yeah, I had one, yeah. He Wait. said, now this was, Ken's a little older than me. So Ken's probably 58 now. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I've known about KB Toys for a long time, but... I don't remember them having masks. Ken does. Hmm. And he bought an expensive mask from Don Post called Overreactor. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. A very cool mask. Yeah. And uh kind of mutate mutant. Yeah, like a like a radioactive mutant yeah. guy. And um he uh he got that, and that thing was like 40-some dollars, and he was just ecstatic with it. He was like, wow, I can't believe it. I own this thing, you know? Yeah. My first really expensive mask was a Frankenstein mask from the Savage Eye. Is that Savage this Eye thing? That's the Funhouse Freak thing? There's a mini one right there. Um, or no. was it a different Frankenstein? The it was other... a different... It was... Because they had multiple. Right, they did. Was that a Savage Eye mask? Yeah, that's the so like that creature wore a Savage right. Eye Frankenstein, but it, that's that's based on it, right? That little guy there. Right, but I'm saying is that was that from Savage Eye, the original mask that he wore in the thing? Yeah, from what I understand, yeah, that's what he had over that Rick really? Baker. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Is it all patched together or something? Like this stuff here? I think so, yeah. This is based on it. Monty did this. Monty Very work. cool. Yeah. Well, I had... um. I had... Uh, it was kind of a high-end Savage Eye mask. It had hair and everything. It had a zipper down the back. It was mm. really, really nice. And... Uh, It was $49. I had saved up all year for it. Jeez. And I went down there and I got it and I was so excited. I finally had one of those expensive masks. The problem was I only had one. And that wasn't good enough. <laughs> I needed to have them all. Yeah. So I kept saving money and squirreling money away and doing chores and odd jobs and went around the neighborhood offering to rake leaves and shovel snow and whatever I could to try to get a little more money. And of course, then there was the famous moment when I saw distortion stuff for the first time. Right. I don't know, famous. It was famous to me. Well, yeah, but, everyone um, knows about it. The Cretan. Yeah, I mean, that was just like another... New level. I, I had never seen anything that absolutely incredible in my life. I still think about that moment all the time. That frisson of excitement that went through me when I saw that. I was just like, the eyes are, what, what, what? are those plastic yeah. domes on there? Or what, what? How did they do that? And finally, when I was 15, I got Tom Savini's great book, Grand Illusions. And he mentioned that he put five-minute epoxy on the creep show creep's eyes to make them, quote-unquote, shiny. 
Mm. And I remember thinking, when he says shiny, does he mean wet? Is five minute epoxy the stuff that uh, was put on those eyes? So I went and got some five minute epoxy and I tried it out on a mask. And lo and behold, it looked amazing. And I thought, that's that's, that's how it's done. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. That's so, crazy. I mean, my love affair with masks is so deep. I don't think there's anything that could kill that love. I hope not. I don't think so. I had the same, the way you had with Crete and it's very similar, like, I... I've told Melissa this. I've told many people this. And we've even reenacted it in um, a video I did for Sideshow based on my mask stuff. And it's that mask. But it's in purple. Which the, one now? The thing I'm disappointed. The melting man. The mel this melting man. Now, it was purple gray. It's right next to the... Re oh, yeah. I remember that thing. But remember, it was back in the day in the 70s, it was purple gray. And yeah, they, they actually... Hair. I think they had that one... Actually, in Spencer Gifts, that time I saw She Wolf. Yeah. I recall it. So I used to just stare at that mask. It's like, fucking great. It's you know, a great mask. Just nobody's, nobody could, you know, my parents had to. <laughs> they're chasing me out of the Foot Locker into this, you know, Hallmark store. and But then, you know, I have fond memories of those too, like the Fang faces and, you know, all the. the, the... No, everything back then was magic like I, yeah. I was just like the fact that these were rubber masks that you could buy them if you had the money it was just right had to be the most exciting thing available in the world yeah and it, it's so when you talk to people about this stuff who aren't into monsters and don't really get it they just kind of look at you with this blank look like mm -hmm. okay that's weird <laughs> It's kind of almost Dahmer-esque, but all right. <laughs> but for monster kids and people that grew up absolutely being completely smitten with fantasy art and science fiction movies and horror and... I mean, I grew up... I'm... I'm how, how old are you now? You're 50? 48. 48. Get, getting there. Okay, so I'm You're... about seven years older than you. Right. You know, my, I feel honestly like I grew up at the perfect time to be involved in this stuff, like to be inspired by it. I was 10 years old when Star Wars came out. Mm -hmm. I was 15 when E.T., Blade Runner, The Dark Crystal, Road Warrior, Conan, The Thing, Poltergeist... All yeah. that stuff came out. Yeah. I I have fond memories of going to drive-ins to see Clash of the Titans, Star Trek, yep. the, the motion, motion picture. picture. That I saw at in the Arcadia Mall in, in the movie theater. Wait, so you were born... What year? Empire you? Strikes Back. I was born in 74. So you were really little when you saw that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd always go to the mall to see all the Star Treks, the Wrath of Khan... And I think when I was about... Wrath of Khan was also 82. Yeah, and I think when I was... I forget. Dynamite I was, year. I might have been 10 or 12 when I went with my older brother to see... Maybe a little older Predator. I yeah, that was like 1987, I think. Something like that, yeah. So, I mean, I, mean, I remember, though, like going to drive-ins and seeing these movies, you know. And my dad was always big on um, if there was a Harryhausen movie on... Uh, or cool. something, something monster, you know, 20,000 leagues or whatever it was. You know, he would always, oh, this has got a great monster in it. You know, he'd always tell me, you know, you, you should watch this. And so he was always, he had, he, it's weird because he wasn't fascinated with it the way I am, but he was, but he, but he loved those old films. So. My mom was the same way. My mother, in many ways, my mom's to blame for all this because... Or to thank, however you want to look at it. But she, I remember being really young and she was telling me about movies with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing and Godzilla. Not that they were in movies together, I'm saying. 
she was just always talking about old horror. She loves old, old horror movies are so much fun. Well, I think, I don't know if this is true for you, but initially, those movies scared the living shit out of me. I mean, they were really scary to me. Right. And I think that it was the trauma of those movies that made me want to kind of control my fear and start creating monsters of my own mm. so that I had sort of control over them. And then once I got to a certain age, it didn't scare me anymore, but it still stayed fascinating. Right. And I was fascinated by simulation and by the idea of creating something out of clay that looked like flesh and you know that whole idea was just endlessly cool to me right. and it still is it was just something so exciting about the idea of fantasy characters yeah yeah i agree there's there's nothing quite like it and I think that's the thing with masks, too. It's just like... Because... I mean, there's many great art forms, but there's something... And I have a hard time explaining it, but there's something about the art of high-end latex masks. Oh, what yeah. we do that just... When that's staring back at you, and it's, and it's in your presence... Not, not, like, you can have all kinds of art, but those things grab you. Well, there's something very confrontational about masks because, first of all, they're life-size monster heads. Second of all, they exist in the same plane that we do, which is three dimensions. And they're, uh, the level of detail that you can get into it, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just endlessly fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, as like, a, I know you and I have had discussions about this, but like as a high-end art, um, I'm always, and I know we've talked about this, it's always baffling to figure out why, I mean, I think the answer is that masks come from a novelty thing, but I think I struggle sometimes with the fact that you sell a mask to a collector, a collector resells it for half the price or whatever, and then they just don't get valued the same way like a, 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 as a painting or something, you know? Well, you're right in the sense that it, I think it automatically has a kind of stain on it because it's... It's... It was born of sort of a Halloween novelty. Mm. And it was never considered any kind of high art anyway in right. the first place. But add to that the fact that most people think of them as kind of cheap throwaway things. They're made out of material that's not really archival. I mean, latex has a shelf life. Right, yeah. You know, and... I mean, it's depressing that, you know, this stuff that we do... But, but another part of it is that... When it comes to... people valuing things in, in terms of art... This stuff's never going to be considered worthy of like a blue chip gallery because it's it's kind of kitsch and it's it's not um it's viewed as just sort of a, a throwaway thing. Yeah. And I mean I've thought about this an awful lot. But, you know, we're never going to see these masks sitting in a New York gallery with people going, oh, well, what's so interesting about this is the artist obviously had this in mind. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> right. if you read into this, you can see that he obviously had tremendous angst about his mountains. You know, it, it's like, it's just throwaway garbage. And, and Hollywood has actually done us no favors in devaluing the very stuff that they have us do. I mean, Bob Burns, who's an old guy who lives in Burbank. I'm sure you've heard of him. Yep, I know Bob, yep. Bob reached out to George Lucas and Steven Spielberg uh, once and said, I've got a huge collection of memorabilia that I think should be in a museum. And I'd like to talk to you guys about launching a museum with my collection in it to keep it for posterity. Because some of it's starting to rot away. I've got stuff from Alien. I've got original stuff from Star Wars. I've got stuff from Aliens. I've got stuff from an American Werewolf in London. The Fly. Yeah. You know, the time machine. I have the original time machine. I have the armature used in King Kong, the original. Right. And you know what? They had no interest. They couldn't have cared less. Yeah. And that goes to show you how little value even the makers of these films put on this stuff. And that's really sad. Yeah. You know, it's their own <clears throat> legacies. And they don't care. Yeah, it's all in the past now for them, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, I find it's, uh, I don't know if it's getting sometimes more difficult or what it is, but, um, I mean, I guess, I don't know, every now and again you get a new collector popping up that gets really interested in what we do, you know, versus like they want another Freddy or Jason or whatever, you know. So that's good. Um, and I think that's just everybody out there sharing stuff and you happen to catch someone's interest and they, next thing you know, they're collecting, they start collecting one and then it becomes more and blah, blah, blah. So then you get those new guys. But... You and I have catered for years to a lot of the same guys, you know, and even they sort of die off sometimes, you know. Yeah, I mean, some of them, one guy just abruptly decided, I think his wife had something to do with it, abruptly stopped collecting all monster masks and just started getting into something completely different. It was like, well, I thought you were loving this stuff. I thought this was like one of your favorite things. It, it just... That was a fad for him, I guess, yeah. I don't know what, because he seemed mm. so passionate. Yeah. And then just out of the blue, just, nope, I don't care anymore about this. Stop. I've seen that, too, with some mass collectors where they switch from, like, high-end stuff to just maybe, like, old distortion stuff only. Or or from there to high-end stuff only. You know, I've seen that, too, remember? Like, uh... Do you remember, uh, what, was the, what was the one collector back in the day? He did that. He collected a bunch of stuff from us, and then he just, like, stopped cold turkey one day. Rick DeFeo, I think. Am I saying that right? De DeFeo? You remember him? I remember the And name. now he does really weird kind of art, like, puts weird animal skulls with things together. And I remember the name. I cannot recall. This would be, like, 2000s early 2000s he was collecting a lot of stuff but anyway yeah he just cold turkey one day just stopped i was like whoa what happened <laughs> i mean he was absolutely enthralled with with masks and then he, and he had a room just filled with them and then he just stopped so i don't know That's what an it odd is. phenomenon yeah strange i'm not vintage i'm grumpy in the chat is saying uh DeFeo? De De yeah, that stuff's probably correct, DeFeo. Um, yeah, I mean, he was a big collector. Uh, he, he was he was friends with Rhonda Underwood and a lot of uh -huh. a lot of different different 
he was on uh, some of those forums we were always on, like HMA and stuff like that. Remember those? My God, remember the forum days? Oh yeah. Prior to all this uh, crazy Instagram and all this stuff that now exists, um, that's how we would get those clients a lot of times before, even before shows, because it was before shows even existed. Well, shows existed, but they weren't Monster Palooza and they weren't Mask Fest and all these things. They did, those didn't exist yet. There were like one to two panel rooms big kind of thing. Yeah. Like maybe several panels. 20, 30 people showing up. Yeah. And one, one would be like for the guys that love Freddie and Jason and Michael Myers, but then there'd be the other side where it was like Jordu, myself, and other, right. you know, guys that would love original stuff, right. you know? Yeah. It was a much smaller group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> so, but. Anyway. Casey, do you want to give a quick shout out to all the new viewers? Oh yeah. Oh, my God. Thanks for keeping me up to date on that. Yeah, yeah. Where are we at here? I don't I'm gonna repeat people. I already know it. Sure, I'm just sure. gonna start repeating. How many oh, people are watching? We got John Eubank. There's a great got painter. About, uh, wow. Hey, yeah. you know what? Thank you guys because that's like a whole new record. Yep. And it's because we have this guy with us tonight it's for not. sure. It is. <laughs> we owe it thanks to Jordu for hanging out with us, Maybe man. Maybe your stuff's just catching on, Casey. Nah, nah. And make sure to let people know. Like and subscribe. Yes. Like, like and subscribe, guys. Come on. Yep. Do it now. <laughs> um, let's see. Who have I not mentioned? I know. Okay. I just said John Eubank. He's here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me go through the list here and see what we got. Kevin Young. I'm not sure if I mentioned you, but there you go. Shadow. We got a shadow. <laughs> Ken Clark. Uh, who else do I see? Liam Dore. Hello. What's up, Liam? Um, There's actually some people in the chat uh, asking about your guys' opinions of different movies like Hellraiser and stuff like that. Okay, let's go into that. Like Everybody's all on the big Halloween kick right now. So. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Jordy's favorite subject. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if he means the movie or if he means the holiday, but... Uh, the, the, the mask. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. See? It's favorite. Uh, all right, yeah, let's, we can go into movie Yeah, chat absolutely. For sure. What, what are the, what's the specific question? Uh, they're just asking what you guys think of the new Hellraiser trailer. I haven't it? seen the new Hellraiser uh, movie. My wife has. What oh. does the wife think? <laughs> Speak up. You're on the spot, Melissa. Oh, I wasn't into it. I just wasn't into it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was... It, it, oh, we just lost all our viewers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there goes... We're Thanks, down to, Melissa. We're no. down to five. Um... <laughs> No one likes it. Um, well, I mean, I, I have to confess, I was never a big fan of the Hellraiser movie in the first place. It was cool. But, I mean, I was never like, oh, my God. It's the most amazing. I was just not into it. Like, it was all right. It was cool. I was a little older when it came out. I think it might have come out in 1986 or something. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember the, the exact, but it came out well after my strong age of wonder, like when I was in my teens and stuff like that. But uh, I just, it was never really like my thing. I, I did like Clive Barker's Books of Blood, though. He wrote a series of short stories which he put out as the Books of Blood. Yeah, I remember those. Those were very good. Very disturbing and very weird. and Unlike anything I'd read. So they were really cool. Um, but the films themselves were... Not yeah, I just was not a big Hellraiser fan. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to watch the new one. Yeah. My wife isn't the biggest fan of that stuff, so... It's always kind of a struggle to get her to watch that kind of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, it's um, we watched it. I, we got it, it was 
the I like the um the new designs of the creatures, the Cenobites. Are they new, really? Well, it not, looks kind of like just not, the same thing, just sort of redone. They're kind of, well, they're kind of um a little different in the fact that they're all somewhat nude and they don't have a lot of you know the old ones had leather yeah they're all, all bondaged out bondaged yeah. out these are not these are all like skin is pulled back here and there but in a designy way you know rather yeah. than just to do that it's it's more like thought behind it so those they were interesting in that in that regard but um i think they were well done and a lot of our friends worked on those of course you know that we know a lot of the guys we know but i think um the film got rather boring quickly and had, I just found it like we, like Melissa said to me at one point, like, I don't even know what the hell is going on. Like, what, what are we watching? This is the first one, the original? No, this or is the new, the new show. show. Oh, so you have seen it. We saw, it, well, we oh. saw a, a good portion of it. Yeah. And then we kind of let, let it kind of at one point just sort let of walked, fly. walked away mm-hmm. like uh, bored. I think we got bored. Right. That was, the did thing. you see that Jeffrey Dahmer show? I did watch some of that. I didn't watch that the whole was thing. Intense. Yeah, that was crazy. It was man. really good. Yeah. I thought it was very, very well done. Yeah, we watched a good portion. Hi. How much of that Jeffrey Dahmer did we watch? <laughs> didn't we stop at one the point? Fourth, the fourth, um, fifth, fourth or fifth? Okay. It's all the same. It's just showing what. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm more into Handmaid's Tale. Now I want to see that. Is that good? Oh, yes. it's very good. So good. Very good. Yeah. So good. All right. You like that Elizabeth Olsen or whatever her name is? Uh, She's mad at you. <laughs> 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 yeah, the Hellraiser thing. It 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 just got boring. Towards, I don't know, it, it just was getting hard to even follow what the hell is supposed to be going on. But What the hell Razor is supposed to be going on? What the hell Razor is supposed to be going on? But, you know, the designs, I think that's what, the only thing that kept me in it was like just seeing some of the, the creature design stuff just to see what they would do with it. I don't know. Well, I'll say this. It was better than the last whatever. I didn't watch any of the late ones. I only watched the first two right. original ones. There's what, like five or six of them? Yeah, and I've heard like most of them are Garbage. really bad, yeah. you know. So I'm sure this is far better than those. Anyway. Somebody today, my, my friend, actually my assistant Jose today asked me, how many creep shows were there? And to be honest, I, I was a little bit stumped i i think there were three that came out in the theater Mm -hmm. yes and then there might have been one that was direct to video and then there's the terrible show yeah on shutter yeah that show is oh is that the one that came out recently like within the last one or two Yes. Yeah. It's a it's a series. Ooh. I remember Ooh. three, but the third movie came way way later down the road. Like the was first, it direct to video? It may have been, but there was the first two theater releases, the one and two. Then I remember a third one. Way like this was in the nineties, I think. The third one came out sometime, nineties or something like that. Late nineties, maybe maybe later than that. I'm not sure, but I remember it being pretty bad. Were they and then, all George Romero? No. The three no. Of them? no. Only, the first one, right? the only first the one? first one was directed by George Romero. Uh-huh. I think Stephen King he was in the first. might have written the stories for the second one, but it, it was dismal. It was right. horrible. Mm-hmm. It was Stephen King at like half energy or something. Stephen Prince. <laughs> and <laughs> Stephen Peasant. Oh. And, uh, I mean, it was bad. Mm-hmm. And the directing was bad. The acting was bad. The stories were junk. Mm-hmm. It didn't retain any of the charm of the first films, of the first film. 
And it just didn't work at all to me. A couple people in the chat right now saying, yeah, Creepshow 3, worst movie ever made, possibly ever conceived. Yeah. It was I've heard bad. very bad things about Creepshow 3. Yeah. Very bad things. I haven't, I haven't seen it, I don't think. It, it's notoriously bad. Like, it's got a notoriously bad um, reputation. Yeah, I've heard the same. Now, here's a good question for you that's very horror-related. Have you ever had Little Debbie's? The, 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 the little pie thing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. You ever had oatmeal I mean, cream pies? Which one? The oatmeal cream pie ones. Oatmeal the cream pie. The one that a lot of people with, associate with Little Debbie's. They're Wait, the most the, famous. Yeah, with like the vanilla yeah. cream in the middle. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm. Those are good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to horror. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sharon has bought a whole bunch of those, and I'm like fatting out on the couch with them. They're fucking awesome. <laughs> He's just munching on them. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like, uh, that reminds me of like, as far as bad movies, like the later pumpkin head releases were the same thing i only saw the first one yeah i've only seen pumpkin head one and i thought it was really good yeah that one was i good. still like pumpkin head a lot and uh i i know that there was a two and maybe even a three yeah they were pretty bad Two's pretty bad. Three gets, I think, is even it's worse. so weird. Why is it so difficult to sequelize a horror film? Why are they mostly awful? Do you think it's because they just the 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 studios see just it just the dollar signs of it, like how to how to like let's just do something off that name because it people like it, so let's try to capitalize on that. Well, that's, but then that's, the care that, goes out the window that like Stan Winston had for it directly. That care to do something cool, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I think they just throw morons at it and they write this garbage. And it's like the same thing that happens um, in movies these days, where they these studios hire a no name director, make him think he's in charge of the film, and then he's really not in charge of anything because they just make all these crazy, shitty decisions on everything all along the way. And then the film comes out really crappy. And everyone's like, what the hell happened? Like the thing that we oh. worked on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the thang. The I just thang. call it the thang. <laughs> it's just so wretched. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the thing was not anything worth talking about. No. An embarrassment. Um. And I have my own little bitternesses about that whole situation, so I don't want to go into it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it never ceases to amaze me how incredibly awful movies can get. And, and you know, I often say this with my friends who are roughly my age. Remember the times when you'd go to a movie and you'd come out and go, wow, that was great. That was how it normally was. Every now and then you come out of a movie theater going, that was awful. God, I hated that. Now the norm is, that was awful. I hated that. Yeah. And the rarity is, holy shit, that was good. You know, Right. like I was walking with a friend once in Pasadena. It was a scalding hot day. And I was like, oh, you gotta get out of heat, man. I'm gonna pass. Ah, let me get some water. I'm getting thirsty thinking about it. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna pass out if we don't get out of this heat. Hey, look, here's a thriller or something. I don't know what this is. Let's just get it out of the heat. Go see a movie. So we went into this theater and we plopped our asses down the seats. And the movie starts, it had Bruce Willis in it. 
and gradually it seemed like the movie was getting better and better and the end was like shockingly good yeah and i remember thinking this movie's incredible this is a masterpiece i can't believe i just chose a movie at whim i didn't know anything about the sixth sense i had not heard anything about it which was the best way to see it and we just happened to walk in to a masterpiece you know, not that M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong has done anything as good since. I mean, I really liked Unbreakable, but after that... Wah, wah, right. wah. But I remember thinking, this movie is incredible. And I remember even leaving the theater, not even remembering what it was called. And I looked at the marquee, The Sixth Sense. I thought, I'm going to have to remember this one. And who is this M. Night Shyamalan? Who is this guy? Yeah. Yeah, I remember when we saw that too. It was like, who is that? Who the hell? He just came out of nowhere and did this incredible thing. Yeah. And then he came out of nowhere again and did another one more incredible thing, and then that was it. Yeah. Now it's pretty <laughs> much just all bad. Did you see that old movie he did? Yeah, we went and saw it. <laughs> saw that in the theater. That was bad. Sharon and I went to see that, and we were like. What I realized about M. Night Shyamalan is that he is a brilliant idea guy, but he doesn't know how to sustain. What he's doing is writing half an hour, what should be half an hour Twilight Zone episodes and trying to stretch them out yeah. for the course of an hour and a half and it doesn't work. Because the longer the movie goes, the more rules you have to establish about whatever it is you've come up with. And the more rules you establish, the more absurd it has potential to get. Yeah. And he cannot find his way out of it. You know, I mean, if it was, if Signs had been a short movie, it would have probably been amazing. Yeah. But it's like a Netflix an series. hour and a half long and like fucking Christ, and, you know, you establish the rule that, you establish a scenario where these things are on a farm, walking through cornfields and shit, which, in case you don't know, if you've never walked through a cornfield, get wet as shit at night. They're exuding what's acid to these creatures the whole time. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> oh my yeah, God, that's true. You know, these creatures are wow. coming from a world where water is acid to them and they come to Earth? <laughs> I've got a great idea, Glax. Let us go to planet Earth. 99% of their planet, even their atmosphere, is made of toxic acid. I think that is a bad idea, Blax. No, let us go there and die horribly. <laughs> Every breath will sear our lungs. You will love it. Yeah. Seventy percent uh, of its surface is taken up with deadly acid. <laughs> Sound cool? No, it doesn't, blacks. Let's not go there. Nah, let's go. And then there were really oh see now I'm now I'm going off. <laughs> Let me just shut up. <laughs> There are probably a lot of people who think Signs is the greatest movie ever listening, and they're like, Shut up, asshole! <laughs> Fat ass, shut your mouth! You're ruining it. Uh... No, 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 one more thing. No, fuck it. One more thing. <laughs> one more thing about Signs. <sighs> that not that everyone says was the scariest part to them, and I thought it was the dumbest part. Which the worst that? part. Which one? Which part You've is that? You've seen Signs, right? Oh, yeah. Which, which part was it? All right, I hope this isn't a spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen it, but <laughs> there's a sequence where on the news they say, we're going to show you some footage from a, you know, a 
quinceanera from Guatemala or some bullshit. And there's this handheld video footage of these kids at a party and they're like, oh, they're like, El Diablo, El Diablo, or whatever. And this creature walks by the camera. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone's like, ah! <laughs> I've talked to so many people about that moment and they go, that was the scariest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, can I explain why? And they're like, yeah, well, you're not going to make me hate it. And I explain it and then they hate it. Uh... First of all, Let's start with the very beginning. No TV station would show that. Some uncorroborated shit from South America or something, or Mexico, or wherever it was from. They're just going to show that, regardless oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. The, the, the potential uh, culture shock, regardless of the panic it could cause, regardless of the fact that they have not even done their due diligence yet to find out if it was real or anything and they just show this thing without any second of all it's something that could be so easily hoaxed it's just a man it's a man it's not like some bizarre creature that you know would take millions of dollars of CGI to create yeah and and how would these Mexicans get a hold of that kind of technology when they live in a third world country, you know, it's completely asinine. And the potential, let's say, let's say for instance, that it was something like it was the alien or something like that looked completely bizarre, looked completely convincing, was some creature from outer space. They still wouldn't just show it because of the potential for culture shock it would cause and panic. That would be a level of irresponsibility that not even Fox News would take a chance with. I mean, <laughs> Fox nobody, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> huh? <Maybe>. Fox well, News. <laughs> but I mean, all stations, yeah. all of them, have to be mindful of what they're saying to the people in the world. You wouldn't just do that. It just doesn't make any sense. So if you think about it in any kind of realistic setting or scenario, that would never happen. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah, I think it only works that way because it catches you off guard in a moment. But yeah, it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the minute you think of real news footage and how it's developed, you realize, no, exactly. it's, not, it's not how and, that would work. You know, but M. Night Shyamalan does this kind of thing all the time. Yeah, He has these moments that he thinks are so cool and so amazing, and he doesn't really think through the realities of how things would go down. He throws it in there because it's cool, but he doesn't really give it the kind of forethought that people like Steven Spielberg gave things in Close Encounters. Gave things <laughs> in Close Encounters of the third kind. Yeah. That, to me, felt very real. There was a great moment when they're, and towards the beginning of the film, when they're on the radio to some... Um, jet airliner anyway he uh so so, so blah, blah, blah. <laughs> i got lost um the jet liner the yeah they're on the radio to a jet liner or or some sort of it might be something in the air force and they're like Whoa, whoa, that was really close. And they're like, well, what happened? What, what's going on up there? We just, these lights it just came out of nowhere. You know, you know, these lights just came out of nowhere. I don't know what's going on, you know. And they're kind of struggling to figure out what's happening. And they say, well, do, do you want to report a UFO? 
Right. And there's like this long pause and they go, no, no, I, I don't think so. I, I, I wouldn't know what to report. Well, uh, me neither. All right, well, carry on. And if you see it again, let us know. You know, right. it's like realistic protocol. And I bought it 100% and I still buy it now when I watch that movie. But... Well, there's a lot of scenes in there that, like, that. that's the thing. You, you could believe it. The train tracks, the truck, you know, getting stuck. Oh, yeah. All that. Yeah, that movie has far more realistic, freaky moments. But I mean, what M. Night, Shyam- M. Night Shyamalan wants to be Steven Spielberg so badly, I think he cries himself to sleep that he wasn't born <laughs> Steven Spielberg. He is trying so hard to recreate those kind of moments, and it's very evident in Signs, it's evident in most of his films that that's what he's trying to do. And sorry, dude, you're just not. You don't have that kind of writing ability. You don't, you, you know, you're, you're lifting this stuff from Steven Spielberg's playbook. And you just, you don't, like, no. So stop. And that you... Shyamalan is probably watching right now. <laughs> he's... Look, man, I like Indian food. I just, you know. <laughs> the, um... Did you work? Wait, you didn't work on that one, though. Did you work on that one? What? Signs. No. No. What, I'm trying to remember. There was one you. What did you. Oh, oh, X Files. You did an alien. Yeah. X Files. Yeah. Swing away. Yeah. What? <laughs> swing away. Tell him to swing away. <laughs> oh. Swing away. Wee. I mean, it. it the fact that aliens would come to a planet at 75% hydrochloric acid to them yeah. is dumb beyond all comprehension. We're literally breathing in little particles of water right now. Imagine what that would feel like to something if that was acid. If water was acid to them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they'd die immediately. Yeah. There's someone in the chat right now uh, that makes. They're wondering uh, which episode of the uh, which episode of the X Files you worked on. Well, the movie. Oh, the movie. Oh, okay. The I I because I was for some reason when we're talking about this, I'm thinking of the alien designs, and then I remember an alien design that that you had done, Jordi. But I think it, that was X Files. Yeah. Yeah. So I had. That it was one. a really lame design. I hated it. Yeah. But it's what the director chose, so that's what we had to go with. Okay. Mm, I've had those. Yeah, those are fun. Those are always fun. <laughs> they always dumb down and water down everything. Well, it's called know. the Lucas effect. Yeah. You put ten designs in front of a director, they will always choose the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Lucas effect. Yeah. Have you ever seen some of the designs that were presented to George Lucas for Jabba the Hutt? I've seen some of those. I don't know that I've seen all of them. I think I saw saw them in... Some of them were so cool. Some of them were so cool. Yeah. And... You end up with this mushy Pizza the Hut nothing. Like it's just awful. I've never been a fan of Job of the Hut. Now I'm real now people are really gonna tune out. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm attacking the great lore of Star Wars. Well, I remember seeing it when I was sixteen. And the creature work in that movie I thought was so terrible, with the exception of a few. Like, of course, you know, the Wee K which are on the sand skiffs, those kind of shriveled Native American-looking guys. Yeah, those guys are cool. Um, of course, the Rancor monster kicks ass. You know what I was always drawn to for some reason? Uh-oh. was Leia's helmet. Oh, that thing's really cool. That helmet was so fucking That's interesting. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. and it's Lando. great design. Lando had this, like... Yeah, that weird kind of... Thorny... Yeah, it was sort of... 
handmade looking. And yeah, like the helmets in that were the coolest. Some of well, the coolest. I mean, the hardware of Star Wars is unassailably kick ass. The thing, actually, the best thing in Jedi, though, the best thing to me was Admiral Ackbar. Yeah. Totally. That looks like a live thing. I yeah. love it. I love it. Nothing can sway me. No, I loved Ak- Akbar. Akbar was fucking cool. I remember seeing pictures of. I don't know where I saw this, but I remember before I saw the movie, there were pictures of Phil Tippett airbrushing Admiral Akbar in like some. what almost looked like a wooded area, but it was probably just outside of a. Uh, a garage or, or somewhere at ILM. The just the the mask. Or yeah, the, the mask. The mechanical he's, mask. He's sitting on a stand and he's airbrushing, and I was like, well, I don't know what that is, but that's badass, and I want that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that 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 was a cool, very cool design. It's funny um, you mentioned Admiral Akbar too. I was actually I was thinking about Admiral Akbar a couple of nights ago for some random reason. But you have a sexual thing for it. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Those lips. Go on. Those lips. <laughs> no, go on. No, I was thinking, because um, that one moment in Return of the Jedi, it's, I think, right after the second Death Star is blown up or something like that. It's, yeah, it's right after the second Death Star is blown up and everybody on the bridge of the ship that Admiral Akbar is on is cheering. And he just kind of like takes a moment and he like breathes a sigh of relief and yeah. he sits back in his chair. I remember uh, watching that as a kid, and you didn't need, even as a kid, it's like you didn't need him like have CGI eyes where it's like you see him blink or anything. No, we had emotion. Yeah, Yeah, it's but you see like through the actor doing his thing, it's you see like oh that sigh of relief and just like the mask is, it's fixed, but even still. But it works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you just you see like you know Admiral Akbar scared and like oh my god like. It's a trap! Yeah, you know that. <laughs> His eyes are all wide open. <laughs> you know, and it's the same mask, too, I'd assume. But it's like... Oh, that, yeah, it is. That Akbar versus Akbar when he's sighing really... It's the same mask, but two different things. And well, a lot of that's just performance. Yeah. You know, excellent performing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you but get God, that. how I loved Admiral Akbar. It's the same. It's the same as uh, with some of the puppets, you know, like Yoda and stuff. Just the performance... Yep. You know, Frank Oz and, and the performances that were put in. Because they're, they're acting rather than just someone trying, some guy behind a computer trying to then reenact CGI performances that is not probably an actor or even understands right. proper or any good type of acting to pull something off like that. You know, they're, they're sitting there trying to, and they're, they're scrutinizing every movement so tight. And then you got this fucking puppet that's just like with a real actor behind it moving it and that's bringing the whole thing to life whether it's yeah. totally realistic or not like et same thing you know you oh, just have love me some et you know i would say i was gonna ask too, like um in your guys's opinion like taking yoda as an example do you think there is a better example of puppeteering when compared to yoda yes or, yeah the greatest puppet i've ever seen in a film is from a movie called The Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. That yeah. puppet... The, the is small plant or the large plant? All of it. All of it? Mm-hmm. All of the puppetry in that film is mind-bogglingly astonishing. And I actually still don't quite know how they did some, a few things. It's just magic. Absolute magic. I've never seen anything that convincing in a hunk of rubber. It's singing. It's dancing, for Christ's sakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's so well done. I think Lyle Conway is a god. Yeah. That's the guy who did all the puppetry and, and designs of the puppets and everything. Yeah, that's who. Uh, I'm not vintage. I'm grumpy in the chat. Just posted right now. Lyle Conway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That was amazing. Seriously. Yeah, Lyle Conway was a fucking god. Just, I mean, he's still alive. I think he's right. quite old now. But God damn, that was great. I mean, Yoda was beautifully done. I'm not putting that down at all, though. 
I mean, I'm a huge Yoda fan. I'm a huge E.T. fan. I think E.T. was fantastic. Yeah. Especially Empire, Yoda, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, none of those subsequent. Yeah, yep. Um, so let's see, what time are we at? Okay, 7.19. Let's, what we're going to do is we'll jump into some other questions that, uh, that they have. All right, let's do it. Let's do some, let's see what we got. Yeah, we got a lot going on. Oh, oh, man. What? Thomas K., the first thing I come across, uh, <laughs> asked Jordu about his thoughts on mid journey AI artwork. Oh, <laughs> God. Don't ask me. I don't either. know. That's, mm. that's, well, that's one we can skip if you guys want no, to. No, 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 no. Let's address it. I think mid journey will eventually become what will be a good starting point for design. As an end point for design, no, because it's just too sloppy and I don't resent it, but it's funny, I was talking to some people at a convention not too long ago and they were we were talking about how in the future there'll be some asshole standing at on a podium and people will go, Oh my god, he's a world famous genius prompter. You know? Oh yes. And they won't <laughs> they they won't say artist, they'll be like, He's a genius prompter. He's come up with the magic words. Oh my god. You know, and that I mean it's not art when you type words in and you know, it's what you do with that. It's sort of like, it could be a tool for helping to think outside the box, but I don't I don't feel like it should be considered an end result or anything. But I'm sure many will. That'll be that. Yeah. All right. What are your feelings about mid-journey? Uh... I don't know. I guess you make a good point. It could be, it, I could see it turning into a tool. I think what worries me about it is what I already hear going on where you have, I've heard of special effect shops using it and different people, you know, using it to come up with designs rather than get a group of really creative artists to do those designs. So that part to me is a little scary in a way. But perhaps it will become just that, like like Photoshop came out and became a great tool, you know. Um, I don't know. It's just it's, but I, I I can't get past the idea in my head that, you know, you're, and I don't know enough about it to really judge it. But I I, I know that like I can't get past my head that you know I've heard that you just you, you can punch in this artist name and this that and that and this and then you come up with this scrambled, jumbled design that you then go in and I don't know I always feel like if it's not coming from within that person to start with the whole idea it just seems like that's not creative art as I know it well it's not creative art as we know it and it's not I mean it's it's damn near karaoke yeah for art you know you don't have any talent so you type a bunch of crap into a thing and something pops out the other end. Yeah, like I've had phone calls from people that I know are not artists. They don't do art every day. They're not artists. They're not working artists. They're fans of art. I know they're not artists, but then they're pumping out some shit and going, oh, look what I did. And it's like, ugh. That's, I don't know. That, that's just... Well, I mean, to be honest, that was my initial feeling Yeah. about... Um, ZBrush, mm. and I no longer feel that way because I've started getting into ZBrush, yeah, and it's a hell of a lot more work than I thought. Oh yeah, it is. I mean, not just learning it, but actually sculpting a thing. You know, if you're going to be really good at it, you have to. You have to use it, and you have, have some <clears throat> abilities. Yeah, and you have to use it all the time because if you if That's you right. do. 
if you do not use it for two months, you will forget all. It's not like it's worse than it's like Photoshop times 20. With totally. Photoshop, you'll go, how the fuck did I do this again? And then you remember right. Right. and you figure it out where this it's like the program's so jumbled and laid out in such a bizarre fashion that it's hard to figure out what the hell was where and what you do and, and then what steps. And I hate the fact that you have to, you can freely sculpt to a point, but once you get to a point where things get so overworked and, and, and uh, when you have too many polygons or whatever, then you have to re you have to fix all that shit to go forward even further yep. and then to pose something. It's a giant pain in the ass. Posing it is that, really difficult. That tool too is so annoying, man. The, the, the sphere with all the, I don't fucking even know what the fuck. I'm oh, doing. oh, you mean, uh, Z spheres. No, the, no, the, the posing tool, the move. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I the hate gyroscope. That, the gyroscope. I hate that fucking thing. I mean, I love Z brush. I've designed some masks in Z brush and then too. sculpted them in clay, you know? Right. And for a design tool where you can crank something out in half the time that you would in clay, that is brilliant about it. I but think. you know what I'm finding? I'm finding that I'm faster in clay. Yeah. I could not have achieved this in ZBrush in I this amount say. of time. Yeah. I could not. Holy shit. Yeah. I just looked at that for the almost like... <laughs> By the way, guys, Jordan is very fast. <laughs> if you didn't know. Very fast. Less than an hour and what, 20 minutes ago? That yeah. Was Full, no, it was a metal <laughs> pole. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, it's uh, and I don't feel that ZBrush allows you to design intuitively the way clay does. You can't just start out without any kind of roadmap and just read into it and go and go and go. It, do, it doesn't feel organic to me. This like this like yeah. I start and I don't have any idea what I'm going to do. And I just sort of am able to read into it and see happy accidents. There are no happy accidents. No, there's none. ZBrush. There's none because you're forced down a road in a non-organic material. Exactly. And you got to follow these rules to get... Like you can get that design. Sure. But to get to that design is not the same way you got to it now in clay at all. It's like that... that that is my very struggle with it too. I cannot figure out. You have to actively think your way into it rather than. Well, because I box. my feeling is that the stumbling block comes with the fact that it's so technical. You've yeah. got to remember to do this and that. You've got to be in this mode. You've got to make sure this is right and that's right. And you're dealing with technical stuff as much as you're dealing with art. When I'm doing creature design like this, just freeform nut nut shit. You know, I'm not even thinking. I'm just going on instinct, what looks right, my knowledge of anatomy. It's just, it's much more pure. I still think ZBrush is an amazing tool, and I've seen some shockingly cool stuff in it. Yeah. I just don't know if I'm ever going to have patience to get there. Yeah, that's the thing. And you know, what's else, you know what else is interesting about it? If you work in it long enough, and you're not working in clay... When you go back to clay, you are so lazy in clay. You, 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 really? It will drive you nuts that you have to match symmetry because this program is always doing that right. for you. And then when you go back and do it in clay, I've noticed this because I worked on ZBrush for like a couple months. I didn't touch clay. And then I went back to clay and I was like, oh my. And I got into this weird habit of only doing one side at a time. That old, which is a beginner habit that you usually break. Early on, yep. you break yourself of that, realizing that's not the way, and you go back to that bad habit. So it can like promote bad habits in clay later. Interesting. Which is, which is I've found, which is like drives me nuts. So I'm scared. In a funny way, I'm actually scared to go back to zebra. <laughs> but I know it's the future in a way. You know, it's it's if depending on. Well, I guess it depends, but you know, at least for statues and toys and all that is future masks i don't know i don't know i suppose maybe i don't know until the price of printing stuff comes crashing down yeah i don't see it being the way out for masks for quite some time i didn't i 
that's the other thing though like would you want to sculpt masks in zbrush that's the no. thing like I, I don't want i have to. no interest in that yeah i don't have any interest i, I get mean, better results in clay any day of the week i know this this material and i know how to use it to manipulate it as well as any of these little fancy kids in zbrush i mean there are some people doing really dynamic stuff and i i applaud them you know it's just that ZBrush, one thing about ZBrush that's absolutely true, not even diehard ZBrush people can deny this, it all looks the same. I cannot tell one artist from another in ZBrush. Mm -hmm. Whereas I can tell immediately who the sculptor is of any given piece. Yeah. Yeah. Because it runs that same line with photoshop had or sometimes has where a lot of guys are using all the same tricks yep they're all using the same tools and tricks to get something well you're going through a digital portal of sorts when you create and it just you're never going to be a really wholly original voice because it always is going to have the same kind of finish to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's a similarity in the finish of ZBrush models. They all, you can tell one when you see it. You Immediately. Know? Yeah, it looks, it, it you, you can, it, there's just a weird way that it handles textures and, and things like Lighting. that. Yeah, that it comes out. Yeah, you can tell. It's it's very strange. I've painted tons and tons of stuff that came from ZBrush. It's just too clean. It does not have an organic, that organic um, touch. Right. It doesn't have a human touch. It's made of, by a computer. Yeah. I suppose its power, in one sense, is sculpting. You can you can sculpt things that are a giant pain in the ass in clay, like zippers. You can throw zippers all over the damn place. Right. There it is. That's kind of, it's, it's you know. Wanting for hard surface stuff and all that sort of thing. Okay, sure. Yeah. You know, it's harder to sculpt that stuff in clay. Right. But there are guys who are doing it and making real good money at it. Like that Burger Strings guy. You know him? Mm, no, it's not Chris me. Hamburger. What's what's his uh, his name? I, literally, is Chris Hamber. I'm sure I've seen his work. I just he not is incredible, and he does these hard surface helmets and robot heads and stuff out of Chavant that are just stunning. Mm. Oh yeah, I have seen this guy's stuff. Yeah, sorry. Oh man. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. I bought one of his things recently. Yeah, that's amazing. They're clean as a whistle. Jeez. So is he also probably afterwards sanding, molding, sanding? Oh, yeah, he definitely does body yeah, shopping. Body but shopping, yeah. His sculptures are really clean. Yeah, like, super tight. Really good. <clears throat> and it looks like it's in Chavant. Yep. Yeah. That's how he starts off. Which is amazing. Because hard surface stuff in Shivani is tricky. Hard service stuff in any clay. Yeah. I struggle in Shivani a lot, though, I've noticed, like, over the years. I don't know why. I've had such... In what way? What do you mean? Uh, even wrinkles and stuff, you know, like skin folds and things. Shivani has always been a struggle for me. Well, that's probably because you can't wash it down as easily. Yeah, you can't soften it as easy as other clays. Whereas, like, Sculpey... I don't know if I've oh, ever told Sculpey you this. Like, so easy. I wish Sculpey was as fast as Wed, where you could throw hunks on, because I would sculpt everything in Sculpey. Just yep. because of how you can get skin folds and wrinkles to look so natural so quick. I love that about Sculpey. I agree. And you Completely. can huff it. It smells. Huff it? I'm just kidding. It smells. It's what? that clay. That clay smells huff. amazing. You threw me. <laughs> Put, no, you can huff it, bro. <laughs> you can huff it. You're no, really good um, stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, that clay to me smells like 
it's it the smell of super sculpey is like the sweetest smelling clay you know like you can you almost can eat it okay don't don't do that <laughs> no for any of the kids watching out there don't, no 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 don't, no don't do that don't eat don't eat sculpey it's not no. play -Doh. don't don't do that <laughs> no ac is advocating for you to swallow large amounts of sculpey <laughs> don't don't do that it just smells good I never yeah. thought of it particularly as a good smell. That's like no? I don't really notice it, really. It smells, uh, yeah, it's got like a sweet, I don't know how to describe it. It's weird. It's a sweet, it's tasty, plastic smell. Eat it. <laughs> Actually got uh, a couple quick questions here. Uh, My kid just ate Sculpey. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Poison Control Center. This first one comes from uh, David Felchek in the chat. Uh, David Felchek is asking, uh, Dodu was talking about a mask that he was using a new material on that made the mask look wet and slimy. It looked fantastic. Just wondering what the name of the material that he was using was. I'll tell you, however, throughout the years, Casey and I have exchanged a lot of different techniques, materials, and tricks, as we have with many artists. This is one Casey came up with, so I can't take credit for it at all. Casey told me about it, and I started using it, and it's pretty awesome. There is a material called E6000, mm -hmm. which is a, I think, a silicone-based glue that you can buy at Michael's and, and hardware stores. You can probably get it at Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, all that stuff. E6000 mixes with naphtha. Varnish Makers and Painters naphtha. And if you mix it together, slowly and carefully, you get this kind of gooey polymer that you can brush on a finished paint job for a mask and you get this fantastic clear slimy look you have to brush on several layers the more layers you brush on the wetter it'll look and the better it'll look mm -hmm. yeah. it smells terrible because it's got naphtha in it so it's probably best to use it outside or wherever you've got a lot of ventilation. Yeah. But it basically takes the place of a material that we used to use all the time on latex masks and monster suits and everything else called SC-89, which was a urethane that was big in the 90s that we had out here. Somewhere along the line, maybe because of the goddamn EPA, I don't know what, but... S, they stopped making S89 the way it used to be. It's very different, and it doesn't have that same really nice, wet quality that it used to have. Um, and it would yellow, right? And it, and it would yellow. Yeah. S, the E6000 mixture does not yellow, and it's very, very much like S89 was. So it's a fantastic thing that Casey discovered. I, you know, how did you figure out how to mix it with naphtha and all that stuff? Well, actually, the funny thing about E6000 was I think it was a phone call uh, back in 2009, I think, I got from Justin Mabry. And Justin had told me about the glue, but he couldn't figure out a way to thin it. So he kind of turned me on to it. But he, he was thinking of just using it for, I think, eyes or something like that. And I said, huh, interesting. I think he was trying to thin it with acetone. And I said, no, I, I think you, it's probably going to be naphtha. So then I tried it uh, on a few things, and it got it to work. So I shared it with Justin, and then, then I shared it with you. But you were the first one to actually apply it, I remember, on a mask, like the whole entire mask, to make the whole mask look wet, which well, was your genetic mutation two, I think. Genetic mutation three. 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 In fact, I have an order for one of those that I've got to yeah so I'm that was that like 
taking it beyond just wetting eyes, like wetting the whole skin and having this whole rubbery, yeah, super rubbery mask. And keep in mind, guys, that E6000, even before Thin with Naphtha, is toxic as shit and smells really bad. <laughs> that stuff smells horrible. A... So drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Kids. Mikey Severe Scoop Show in the chat. Uh, is wondering Mikey C- uh, Seaver. Seaver, yeah. So is it more flexible than Liquitex? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the actual advantage to it? Oh, it's super flexible. It's well, like rubber coating. First of all, yeah, it's like very tough rubberized coating it's water clear and it's uh it just is spectacularly wet looking Mm -hmm. but you've got to lay it layer on several layers for it to really look its best and here's another thing i'll tell you guys um because i've run into this and i ran into this once and i remember asking jordu if he had this problem do not seal your mask with a glossy sealer and then try to brush that on because it will just, obviously, it will just uh, uh, bead up all over the place. Was that what the problem you were talking That's about? That's what it was. I sealed with varnish, Liquitex varnish gloss, and then I tried to gloss, and that's a mistake. You need a matte finish, something where it can grab. That's the mistake I made. Tooth. Tooth. It needs a, yeah, it needs a tooth. So, you know, seal your mask with a matte spray or varnish or something that's not going to be glossy or a glossy surface before you put the E6, because the E6000 is going to do all that for you anyway, like Jordy was saying, and then you do layers of it. Have you used ultra matte medium from Liquitex? Yes, I love it. The greatest shit on earth. Yeah. I use it all the time for sideshow stuff because we have to sometimes push deep deep blacks and things right, and you exactly. need and you know if, if if you have a deep area that's glossy then the other areas look terrible yeah it doesn't look right so i use it and i've actually i found recently even on on some of my uh latest projects i'll mix um a thin color into it like black for example i'll mix black in with it a little bit and thin it and airbrush it because then it looks a little less chalky too because if you go because you probably notice it can get real chalky on you yeah. if you're not careful. So what do you do? So I'll just mix a color. Like if I have a color I'm trying to matte down, I'll take like a, let's say black, right? I'll take a little bit of matte black paint, mix it in with the ultra matte, thin it, and then airbrush it over. Huh. Okay. So that way it's um, matting that paint, but also the surface. But you it's have a... It's not chalking it out. It's not chalking it out, Yeah. It helps. Yeah, that stuff's really great for clothes and stuff. Got Shelly Moss in the chat right now, actually. A little more on the naphtha thing, or the naphtha question. Uh, they're asking, what's the ratio of naphtha to E6000? Oh, boy. Sounds like something. AC, I don't know if you'd want to do like a episode hell no in the garage (laughs) it's too stinky you gotta do that stuff outside what would you say casey uh, i don't know i'm always so bad at it i maybe i would say about three to one three parts about right yeah three parts e6000 to one part naphtha yeah maybe a little more but you gotta like like you were saying you've got to give it time to to let the naphtha thin it out too don't like rush it and try to get it to thin out it takes it takes a little bit do it in like a big glass jar like a like a mason Mason jar jar. and thin it with a big chip brush or some brush or something that that you can go in there or, or a popsicle stick and just keep stirring it up until it's the consistency you're looking for yeah you want it to be kind of like a little thicker than pancake syrup mm-hmm. to get a really nice wet effect. And then your mask will be so freaking rubbery after that stuff dries. It's just like amazing. Yeah, it toughens things. Have you thought about layer painting with that at all? 
you know, I have, and I haven't done it yet because I just don't have the patience to go back. And... Right. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Another layer. But I mean, it might be worth it to give it a shot. Give it a shot. But then we have to replicate that. <laughs> That'd be the other bad part, right? All those steps. Well, it depends how many orders there are. Yeah. <laughs> 30. No. Because uh, I've done it with um, Prosade. Oh, really? Yeah, you can do layer cleaning. And you can then brush a layer of Prosade over top and then do more painting and brush another layer. You can do that. It looks really translucent. Huh. But, again, like you said, it's patience because it's like, you know, I wouldn't want to replicate it over and over. Can I do a quick plug? Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, go for it. Um, I have a class that's coming up November 11th, I believe. It's a weekend class online. Um... That's full head mask making from the very beginning to the very end of the process. The first day is probably going to be quite a long day because I not only have to sculpt, mold, and pour up a mask in one day. Yes. What are you and doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. But then, but then I'm going to have to then pour it and seam it, pull it and seam it, and paint it on the second day. So the mat, the class is on my website, shell, jordushell.com. The class is called From... Maybe we can pull up. Yeah, what, what's it? It's we from something... Pull oh, up uh, Jordy. I am that dumb. But I don't even know what the hell it's called. <laughs> I forget. It's how right. dumb I, I'm my own class. I don't even know it. Hey, keep in mind, guys, we work a whole long eight-hour day, and then we come here and do this, so we're a little... I will say... We get a little brain right now, twisted. There was a fellow in the chat earlier today. I believe it was... I think it was Schneider, I want to say. Uh, they actually mentioned that they had signed up for both of you guys' masks. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Thanks, cool. Nick. You're going to learn a lot of mask shit. Yeah, go to his classes. So you're going to go to shellstudio.com. Is that correct? Shell? It's Jordu Sorry. Shell. Jordu Shell Studio. Studio? Just no. Oh. All right, don't listen to me. Jordu Shell.com. From Clay to Creature. From there Clay to Creature, yes. From Clay to Creature. And uh, you'll see my entire process of making a mask. Can we link that up in there in the chat? Uh, Is there a way to link it that. for them? Sorry, go ahead, Jordy. But uh, join us. The class is almost full. So hurry up. If you want to join, join. Do it now. So uh, now, okay, wait. Are you doing a full head mask? Like I shoulders? Am not the no, shoulders. Not shoulders, sorry. It'll um, be a head mask. It'll be, it'll be like what you're doing. Okay. Except, okay, okay. except it'll be neck. No, no it'll have just, a full head. It'll be two half molds. Okay, just a head. Okay. That's cool. That that will be... I believe it's the 11th and 12th of November. Online class? Yes. Online. Everybody can be in that motherfucking game. Yeah. Seeing if you do go to check out his page. There you go. It's, it's instead of white and black. Yeah. Just, uh, there you go, guys. If you want to learn from the best mask maker, you definitely need to go sign up for that class. One of them. One, of, one the, of the best mask makers. One of the good makers. ones. Yes. There are a lot of good ones. One of the most creative. 
<laughs> imaginative mass makers. One of the, th I, you know, that's the, there's a couple things you do that I've always been so freaking enamored over, or blown away by, or fond of, and that is your insect designs. And I mean, your, I mean, everything, your aliens, all of it. I could, I can go through any genre and pick something that you've done that I'm like, that is fucking amazing. But the, but the insects, and then boogeyman. And then I think when you do animals integrated with human hmm. hybrid type stuff is some of my favorite stuff, you know? Yeah, I love insects. I think insects are the coolest. Do you have any dried insects that you have? Do I have any, what's that? Dried insects? No. You mean in the cases? Yeah. No. Mm -mm. I haven't collected any of them. I know you have a mass collection of those. I have quite a large collection of insects. I really love them. But your knack for doing those things is always fascinated me. Yeah, I think it's because I find insects so disturbing. Yeah. Speaking of creep show, the only thing in that whole movie that freaks me out is that roach sequence. It's just, oh, ooh. yeah, in the house. Jesus old, Christ. Old yeah. Yeah. It's just too much. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't want to leave. He's got, he's like, um, uh, agoraphobic. Yeah, agoraphobic. Yeah. Is that it? Where he's, well, he's a germaphobe. Germaphobe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, in the summertime, these great, big, roachy monsters get into our house. And when they fly, they're not like, like, like they're just awful. Yeah. My wife screams at the top of her lungs, and it scares me so bad when she screams. She'll see one on the floor, on the counter, or flying, and it's this blood curdling. Blah! You know, it's awful. <laughs> they scare me worse than the insect itself. But when those fucking things take wing, they are really nightmarish. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the noise they make flying is just like that's not that's a bird thing that's not even a an insect yeah. and it's not a cicada no no no. <laughs> no 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 these are of the roach family right. and they need to be killed all <laughs> but that misses up some aspect of the ego to shut up I don't care about the ecosystem kill them all Die, monster, die. Exactly. But the ecosystem, shut up. <laughs> oh, Jordan, we actually have a question here from Mark Hansen about your upcoming class. Yes. Uh, question for Joe Dudes. Uh, what mask blank are you giving students for the premium eight purpose? Well, that remains to be seen. It's whatever I create during the class is what you're going to get. So I've got a vague idea but I'm, it hasn't really solidified it's going to be determined on the day it'll be something cool i promise it's not gonna suck <laughs> At least i hope not nah it'll be good it'll be good it's going to be something fairly simple that leaves a lot of room for pain ideas um so, there you go. Nice. Any other questions or comments? Let's see. We're actually running out near the end, but if anybody has any uh, yeah, what time is questions oh or short questions or whatnot they'd like to ask, uh, let us know in the chat. Just go ahead and post them up, and I'll ask them as they come in. Yeah, that was quick. Time has flown by, man. Mm -hmm. That's been kind of
kind of nice. People have been in the chats uh, posting up some of the different projects they've been working on. And awesome. Sometimes they'll ask a question, but then everybody in the chat kind of answered for them. There was one folk, I think it was Carolina. Oh, Carolina asked a question. Carolina Kiwi Creation. They were asking about um, how to make uh, something translucent on a chupacabra project. Something translucent? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, they'd have to explain what... Yeah, like teeth? What? What yeah, is it? What, the skin? What? It was one that was there. It just lit up. What was her name? Carolina Kiwi Creation. Carolina Kiwi Creation. Let's see if I can find it. Hmm, how long ago was it? <laughs> it might not even be on anymore, you know. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I found it. Okay. Ah. One of the challenges I am facing with my upcoming project of the Chupacabra is making bat ears that are paper thin ah. or easily translucent. That's it. Uh, not sure what the final material to use for that should well, I mean, you can use, you can make a latex thing. It's just going to be a little difficult to cast because the mold would be so thin. Like, like the area that it fits in will be so thin. Mm -hmm. You could sculpt the ears, you know, from scratch using like nylon stocking or something. To create the paper thin look of the ear that light will definitely shine through um i kind of have to see the design and from there you know but just think outside the box the best advice i can give you is to think outside the box on this stuff because that'll give you you know that that'll that'll help you to, you know, basically what creature designers do when it comes to challenges like this, we're problem solvers. You know, if, if I'm looking for something that will give a specific effect, I've got to kind of become a sort of inventor and kind of think about all the materials in the world. What I do is I think about what closely resembles that that isn't real, that 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 not that is real, but that that exists in the world. What does the effect look like? For instance, like bird feather veins. Yeah, you could you could use you could use insect antennas. Cos clay, yeah, which is flexible and rubbery when you bake it, like Sculpey. Mm -hmm. It's like Sculpey, but it's flexible um, when you bake it, and it is translucent. If, if it's something that you actually want to wear, that's probably going to be fairly heavy. So it's a matter of just sort of thinking outside the box with almost all this stuff. Now, if it's a if it's like a display bust or something. If it's a display bust, that's a different animal. It's a different thing. You could cast it in translucent materials and things like resin your thing but it sounds like it's a wearable thing oh yeah I've got uh, my mental mech factory in the chat right now is asking uh, if we can get a little more clarification on the gorilla snot that, oh uh, Jordu turned me on to that I, yeah I didn't know what the heck it was called I think we figured that out though. Yeah, it's did. called alco gum yeah alco gum there you go Gorilla snot? That's, I... <laughs> the short we came up with in the moment. That's my fault. I just said that on a whim because I said, I don't remember what this shit was called, man. Jordy gave it to me. and Well, Alco Gum, I can't remember the name of the company that makes it, but just look it up. Alco Gum. A-L-C-O Gum. And Alco Gum, I found out about it through Distortions Unlimited. They mix it with latex and... They literally 
it thickens up rubber so much that it becomes like peanut butter and you can smear it on the seams um and you know with a brush and then brush it out with water and it covers up the worst seams so that's what distortions uses it for um but uh other than that, that that's pretty much what it does it thickens up latex it works really well One quick question from Chris Dawson in the chat. They're wondering any update about remote viewing. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm always getting attacked with this question. <laughs> well, remote viewing is almost done its festival run. And once it is, then it will be available to all who contributed. We're going to send out the perks, this and that. The reason that the perks have taken so long to send out is because there are things in the perks that reveal that they're kind of spoilers and i didn't want anyone sharing that online but we're getting to it we're gonna fulfill all our promises the the film is completely done and it will be going out um to all who contributed right now you know it we had to choose it's won a couple awards it's been accepted in some very very big um Festivals like the Fantasia Festival, and it won some awards, and so we're just kind of waiting for it to finish that festival run, and when it is, it'll be available. I'm very proud of the film. I think it's turned out really well. You haven't even seen it, have you? Chris? I have. You shared it to oh, me. Oh, you yeah. did. I've seen it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, actually, yeah, uh, you did show it to me. Um... And yeah, congrats on all that, man. That's so awesome. But it's got some really icky stuff at the end, which I hope you'll like. I'm very yeah. pleased with it. Yeah, it was cool. And there's my spiky contribution for tonight. That looks awesome. And how, what, less than two hours. Just a bunch of spikes and that character. That character. It's the number one thing. How'd you do tonight? Ah, I just threw a bunch of warts and cleaned a bunch of shit up. Is it pretty much done? Yeah, it's getting there. I'm gonna go through and detail some shit. Pores and stuff and finish it up. Tighten up the teeth. Yeah, but it's getting there. It's almost there. I envision it with hair or a hood or something. Yeah. This all came out of some high school kid high school kid that lived down the street from me that scared the shit out of me all the time. He looked like that? No. <laughs> not at all. He looked like a high school kid. It started as supposed to be a version of him, but then it slowly came and in, turned into this, and his name was Eddie Cromwell. And I always liked the name Cromwell. I just thought that was freaky. So that's what the mask is called? Cromwell, Cromwell. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> But yeah, and then I don't know what, these are eyes and, I don't know, I photoshopped something real quick and then that's what it was. It had a nose, I took it away, I didn't like it. So it just became less and less him very quickly. Hey, hey, come back here. Oh. <laughs> Is that your daughter? That was my son. He might oh. be in his chonies. <laughs> that looks cool, man. Yeah, you can throw it in the dumpster, you can finish it, you can do whatever you want. We won't throw it in the dumpster. <laughs> well, then Super it's cool. going to crack apart. Yeah. You ought to finish it up. Sell it. Who cares? We can collab on it. This yeah. is my rough and you finish it off. There right. you go. Boom. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight, yes. guys. Thank you, guys. And what did we have? How many people did we have tonight? What was uh, the final? Holy so shit. Jordan's going to be here every Monday. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll come back whenever you want. You just let me know. Yeah, we'll have him back. Because I, I had a blast. It was re it went really fast. Yeah, it went by quick. So, guys, do not forget about Jordan's class coming up. 
Sign up because he has limited spaces. November 11th. November 11th. Go to his website, jordushell.com. And Make you have sure. a class coming up too. I do. Mine is sold out. Uh, I don't have much space, so it's smaller. And it's an are in-person. Are you having it here, live? In, in here, yeah. Oh, okay. In-person. We can only How fit. many students are you fitting? I think it's like 12. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. But it's in here, it's tight. That's tight. So, um... But yeah, make sure you guys check out Jordy's class because that's an amazing class. You will learn a shit ton in that class. And I don't mean that lightly. I've learned many, many amazing things from this man over the years. So you guys will learn a whole bunch. Um, what else? What's Sam, remind me. You guys, it's been two weeks, so I'm like out of the loop here. Um, let's see. What do we got to close with? Yeah, I'll be there Friday night at Son of, just roaming around. If you guys are at Monster Palooza, which is next weekend, um, join us on Facebook. Join us on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, God, you should do the end. <laughs> All right, join us on Monday Night Monster Jam on Facebook. That's our Facebook page where we, you guys, can keep up on everything and share your work with everyone. Um, Want to thank Jordu for coming tonight. Thank you yes. so much, thank man. Thank you for having it's been me, a brother. Blast. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, you know, we'll catch you guys next Monday with uh, episode 26. I have no idea what that will be. Oh, no, I do. It's going to be the painting thing demo, the chimpy skin stuff. So everyone's oh, asking for that. Right. Yes. So we'll do that. And we'll see you guys then. Thank you guys so much. Have a great Monday night. See you. Bye-bye. Later.